Hey folks, good morning. I want to welcome everybody to this little video. It's going to be an informal talk about a few issues, you know, surrounding the pandemic that we find ourselves in. You know, a lot of things I do on YouTube, they're sort of, the, it's, it's to document my ride uh, through life. Some of the videos I do are purely for me. They're, they're for me to reflect back on, to reference. Um, and, you know, since they're on YouTube, I'm obviously sharing everything with the world. I'm sharing, you know, my life with you guys. Um, so some of, the, some of the videos that I do, you might find extremely boring or pointless. Uh, but some of the things I do are, are, are for me. And YouTube is a platform where you can, you know, you can store these videos, these memories, and it's easily accessible. I'll say it again, you know, a lot of us that have videos and photographs, they're locked away on hard drives. Most of the time you got a password on your hard drive. And if you died right now, unless you're like really jam up in your will or you've given that password to somebody, a lot of your memories, your videos, and your, your photographs are gonna die with you. And so with that said, you know, I use YouTube in, in a lot of ways. And one of the ways I'm using it for, uh, you know, for me, for selfish reasons. Uh, my kids or family members you know, on down the line when I'm long and gone, as long as YouTube's not, doesn't go defunct, you know, they can pull this up and, and, and you know, see, see a slice of my life. And it's a beautiful fucking mind. Disturbing me, messing up my video. No, I'm I just kidding. Get that. All right, baby. Uh, with all that said, this this video, I'm just going to talk about what happened back in January, and this all pertains to to COVID-19. And folks, I'm coming to you right now. I'm currently in the Philippines, and let's just look at the numbers. Today is Friday, April 17th. Today is day 32, day 32 of the Luzon Enhanced Community Quarantine. And if you've been asleep for the past few months, uh, basically we're locked down here on Luzon. I can venture out Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays only here in Subic. I can't even cross the bridge to Barrio Barreto unless I'm going to the hospital. Uh, so I've been in jail for 32 days uh, due to this situation and we're making the best of it even though I'm not happy about the fact that you know my freedom has been uh, restricted. Nobody's happy about that. And I don't agree with um, a lot of the, the ways around the world that you know that governments are handling this and I think if you've watched any of my past videos you understand my position on it. But what I wanted to talk about is I basically got to thinking about back in January when, when I got sick. And I did a video um, because what I do when I get sick or just periodically, I go on these fasts, you know, two, three, four, five day fasts, whatever I want to do. If you study the science of fasting, you'll understand why. Um, without trying to get too far into the science of it, your, your body does what it has to do to survive. And the science, the theories, basically say that once your body uh, depletes all the good things, like the good sugars, the good proteins, the good stuff that it's supposed to eat. If it doesn't have anything else to eat, your body starts looking around and saying, hmm, the cancer cells look pretty good over there. Let me, let me eat them fucking cancer cells and convert that to energy. Hmm, that virus over there looks tasty. Hmm, that bacterial infection, let me go eat that and convert that into energy so the body can keep functioning. There's a, a, a doctor, I can't remember his name, 
I've, I've read a lot of his stuff, but it's just not in my mind. But he, I think he's out of Canada, uh, who basically wrote the books on this stuff. And if you read any of his material or watch his, his videos, uh, I think you'll, you'll come to see, you, you'll be a believer. So anyhow, what happened, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this timeline just so I sort of document it. You know, I've, I've got my notes here, and if, you know, if I lose my notes or whatever, I wanna just kind of document this in a video. So what happened back in January? Well, on January 8th and January 9th, unless I'm totally screwed up, I think those dates are pretty accurate, uh, we went down to Manila. You know, this is this is before any of this uh, coronavirus shit was really hitting. You know, it was kind of new. They were, I think they may, at the time maybe just calling it some strange case of pneumonia out of, out of China. So on the eighth and the ninth, we were down in Manila, and I go back to my calendar here and see what days those were. And we went down there to, to pick up my little girl. So let's see, the 8th was a Wednesday. Okay, so we went down on the 8th. We went on the 9th. Um, to, a, uh, to an appointment. And that night on the 9th, uh, we stayed at a place place is irrelevant but there just happened to be a group of Chinese folks staying there at the place where we went to now, this group of Chinese folks was like I don't know 30 of them 20 30 40 let's just say 30 they have been staying there for several days and they were in the process of leaving so when we got there there was 30 30 Chinese folks, all their bags, you know, still had the the, uh, the bag tags on there. Obviously, they were fresh off of a flight a few days before from mainland China. So they were all hanging out in the common area because they had to check out. The hotel had to clean the rooms because there was another group of Chinese folks inbound that night, fresh off the flight. So here we are within... Uh, you know, a short period of time hanging out amongst 30 people from mainland China. That night they left, here comes 30 more. So just say a nice round number of 60 people. And I could be off by 20, 30, it could be anywhere from 50 to 100. I would estimate 60, probably about the best guess. In the common area, you know, I'm down there drinking beer. I'm hanging out with uh, with some some other uh, expats. The uh, the folks from China are hanging out there, and we were kind of interacting with them, talking. Most of them didn't speak a lick of English, but we were just, hey, how are you? Where are you from? And you know, you get these looks, and they could say hello. We're just trying to be friendly, but it, they're all sitting down there smoking, right? Now I haven't lived in China but I've lived in Thailand and I have been around Chinese tourists uh, pretty much every day of my life for years. Um, one thing that you notice about the Chinese, it just seems like everybody's smoking. Everybody's smoking a damn cigarette, everybody's coughing, people spitting on the damn sidewalk. Chinese tour groups, Folks, they're, they're just, a, oh, bless their hearts, they're a fucking nuisance. Um, but one of the things that, in, in my perception of the Chinese folks, is they're always smoking, they're always damn coughing, right? I guess it's a combination of the cigarettes, the fucking air quality in China. Uh, you know, they're, they're very loud when they're talking to one another, blah, 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 just loud, loud. You know, I don't know who's louder, my my old lady or the Chinese tour group. Maybe we should do a test with a decibel meter and find out the, the winner of that contest. So anyhow, everybody there at the, at the hotel, for me, it's just typical Chinese folks, typical 
smoking, coughing, hanging out, uh, you know, conversation. And so we were exposed to approximately 60 folks fresh from China. And, and again, that was on, let me just look one more time to make sure I get this, get this accurate. That was the night of January 9th, which was a Thursday. Okay. Um, we came home, you know, came back to Subic. And folks, again, this is before any of this shit really is firing up. I mean, you know, this is the, the infancy of this, this situation that we find ourselves in. So, I mean, who, who the hell thinks anything about it, right? So we come home. And on, I believe it was the 12th, unless I've got that date screwed up, Sunday the 12th, I think that's when the tall volcano blew. Let me just pull this up. Tall volcano eruption 2020. Let's see. Start date January 12th and end date January 13th, yeah. Okay, so, so that cooked off, right? And everybody's like glued to the TV to try to find out what's going on with this volcano. Now, I actually did a live stream. Let me pull that up and see the date that that live stream went down. Let's see, go to live stream. Because at that point, I mean, this, this volcano is cooking off. It's throwing ash up in the atmosphere. You know, we know that that's going to disrupt flight patterns. You know, could potentially, uh, you know, disrupt logistics. You know, we live close to Pinatubo. Now, obviously, I wasn't here in 1991 when Pinatubo cooked off. But, you know, I'm familiar with the story. So, I mean, we're concerned about, all right, what are we going to do if this volcano cooks off? That was streamed on January 13th. So on January 13th, we did we did a video um, that was uh, Monday morning. Well, I went back and looked at my notes, and I, I kind of just noted here that Faye was sick. So Faye didn't come in that day. She didn't come to help us out that day on Monday because she was sick. Um, then... She came in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then laid out, uh, I say laid out, she, she didn't come in on, on Friday because she, you know, just didn't feel good. Now, during that week, the old lady and the babies, you know, it just seemed like everybody just had the bunk. Um, you know, sometimes I call it the Manila funk, uh, I got different names for it, but you know, going to Manila, Manila is such a crowded place in certain areas. It's fucking dirty. You know, goddamn jeepneys belching out fucking uh, diesel smoke, fumes. A lot of times, if you just go to Manila and hang out, I guess it's the same in any major polluted, overcrowded city. You know, you just, you know, you just feel like you got the funk, you know? So everybody was kind of sick that week and on Friday that Friday and that Saturday I remember I was feeling sick well I just wasn't feeling real well but my buddy came and drug me out and we went out I got drunk that night woke up the next day I was feeling like shit that was a Saturday morning he come got me again and I went out and I motored through it and, and again folks I'm, you know there's no uh, at, at that point, there's no, hey, this is what's going on. Hey, this is a fucking pandemic. I mean, we were just thinking about the goddamn volcano. What the hell is this volcano going to do? You know, if it really cooks off, how are we going to get out of here? We don't want to be breathing this ash and shit. And, and I think back now that I even thought maybe uh, part of it, the reason that we were sick was from the fallout from the ash of tall volcano. So, anyhow, that next week, I guess from, uh, it, it seemed like everybody else was okay, but I really don't remember because about Monday or Tuesday of that week, 
my condition got worse. And when I say worse, this shit put me in the fucking bed. I could not leave the fucking bedroom. And I'll just go through just sort of describing what what went down. And in a nutshell, it was basically like I had the flu, but it was like the flu, uh, you know, to the 10th power. You know, I've had the flu before, you know, hell, lived in America, had the flu, I've had colds. But this was a combination of fever, fucking extreme fucking headache, body aches, coughing. I could not stop fucking coughing. Just constantly, constantly coughing. At night, I had to sit up in the bed and just kind of like hold my chest and, and just try to catch my breath. Uh, in, in the, it, it was like during the day, I was like constantly just putting pressure on my head. You know how you put like pressure points to try to relieve a fucking migraine headache or an extreme headache. I shouldn't say migraine, just a bad headache. So during the day, I'm coughing, trying to fucking keep my head from, from pounding, you know, not leaving the bed. And then at night, I just, I couldn't really sleep at night because I'm sitting up trying to catch my breath. And, and the coughing was fucking nonstop. So I decided to go on a fast. I'm like, fuck it. This shit is bad. I don't know what the fuck it is. I figured it's just some shit I picked up in Manila. Another fucking bug or bacterial infection from fucking the, the shitty conditions of Manila. And then I thought, well, you know, a lot of times if I'm around a lot of cigarette smoke, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of nights in clubs. And throughout the years, if I spend a night in a club where everybody's smoking, you know, it's a little smoky ass juke joint, you know, where you open the front door and fucking smoke rolls out like, like a Cheech and Chong band. I would get sick for days afterwards because I, my lungs just can't, uh, it's like they're allergic to cigarette smoke. Now you see me puffing on cigars or, or cigarettes, I don't inhale that shit. But if you're confined in a club, if I'm confined in a little small juke joint, you know, fucking, uh, you know, off the beaten path in, in Texas, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, so, you know, one of the mold joints, it would take me three or four days for my lungs to recover. It was literally like I was allergic to cigarette smoke. So I remember thinking too, damn, I was around all them Chinese folks just fucking smoking like, like goddamn chimneys, you know. I remember thinking about that, and I remember thinking, well, maybe this is the ash from the fallout of this fucking volcano. Why I can't breathe? And, you know, I'm like looking outside, looking up at the atmosphere, you know. Again, it was, it's, it's a concern. Everybody, you know, a lot of people are sending me messages about, hey, man, get the fuck out of there, you know, because of this, this ash coming down. It's going to fuck your lungs up. So anyhow, folks, I'm in the bed. I'm in the bed, I am out of commission, I cannot leave the room. Now, the, the good thing about that is that since I couldn't leave the room, there's no way I could have, you know, I didn't come in contact with anybody else in the community. Obviously, I'm here with my crew, uh, but I'm, I didn't leave that bed. I was quarantined to that bed, uh, basically not because I wanted to be, but because I just physically could not leave the fucking room, right? So I was in an effective quarantine for those four or five, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, you could almost say six days. Um, I would say six days. I pulled a four day fast, but it was probably almost six days that I was quarantined, somewhere in there which probably ended up being a very good thing. If, if I hadn't been feeling that bad, I would have motored through it, just like I do with any other illness. I'd have been out doing my thing, um, which probably wouldn't have been good uh, if what I had was COVID-19. Now, I'm just telling you what happened and my suspicions but at this point, I have no evidence to say that's what it was. 
after all this shit is over, I will go. But folks, this is three fucking months ago. This ain't like last week, so trust me, I ain't. It, I, this is three fucking months ago. But after this is over, I will go to the hospital. I will get the uh, the antibody test to see, you know, if potentially that's what it was. And at this point, I'm leaning towards that's what it was. So anyhow, the the thing that scared me about this. Well, obviously you can't fucking breathe at night. That's kind of scary too. You can't stop fucking coughing. But again, nowhere in my mind is is this COVID-19. This is before the fucking scare really started getting going. Um, my uh, my lymph nodes uh, in my neck started. It felt like a fucking uh, like marbles, and that's what really scared me. And I remember uh, you know telling telling my old man. And talking to him about it and just tell him hey man you know the rest of this shit I'm not worried about but my lymph nodes are fucking swollen and I'll just read this I just fucking googled it the first thing lymph nodes are small glands that filter lymph the clear fluid that circulates through the lymphatic system they become swollen in response to infection and tumors Lymphatic fluid circulates through the lymphatic system, which is made of channels throughout your body that are similar to blood vessels. So we go to the Mayo Clinic here. Uh, swollen lymph nodes uh, play a vital role in your body's ability to fight off infections. They function as filters trapping viruses, bacteria, and other causes of illness before they can infect other parts of your body. Uh, common areas, your neck, under your chin, in your armpits, and in your groin. Um, the, in, in my neck, it felt like I had fucking marbles. That's what was concerning me. So when I'm going through all this stuff, uh, this is one of the one of the fucking reasons that me and my daughter's mother got sideways. I was supposed to bring my little girl back that Thursday, which was uh, the 23rd. Folks, I was off of my, I could not leave the fucking bed. There's no way, you know, I was gonna be able to uh, take a ride to Manila, drop my little girl off and come back. It just, it wasn't happening. Uh, anyhow, that's a personal side note. That's, that's the catalyst of why she and I got sideways. You know, when you're dealing with ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, nobody has any fucking understanding for you as the male. That's just the way it is. I was literally in the fucking bed. Uh, these ladies told her, hey, look, this dude, this dude can't leave the room. So what I said was, I said, hey, look, I said, you know, I, I try to try to be better by Saturday and bring her. I said, if not, I'll have the ladies bring her down there on Sunday without me. There's no traffic on Sunday morning, so if you're ever going to try to transit Manila, you always do it early on a Sunday morning. So I, you know, I had them tell her, "Hey, look," and I did. I went ahead and arranged the van, and they told her, "Hey, uh, we're bringing her home on Sunday morning, whether he's well or not. You know, we're going to bring her back. Don't worry about it." And the girl is just a fucking. Let me just stop right there. There, there was some, there was some drama over it, okay. But legitimately, I was sick and I couldn't bring her back on that Thursday. Uh, I was out of commission. I didn't want any trouble, you know. We had a great thing going on every two weeks, uh, but physically, I couldn't leave the room. So these lymph nodes were were really starting to concern me. Um, now. On that, that Saturday is when I came off of the fast and I started feeling better. That was Saturday the 25th, and I believe that's when I did the video. Let me just check the date here. Yeah, recording date, January 25th. So I did a video entitled, Coming Off of a Four-Day Fast, No Food and No Beer. All right, now I'll read you the description, just in case you, you don't, you don't, you're not going to go over there, which a lot of people never follow the links, but... I just went four and a half days with no food and I feel pretty damn darn good. 
Okay, every now and then I will pull a fast just to let my body zero itself out. <clears throat> For me, I also use fasting to help fight any illness that may come my way. That was the purpose of this particular fast because I had a respiratory infection that was kicking my ass. I even had to get some help from my friend, Dr. Antibiotic, to get rid of this crap. And so I was popping some doxies because I didn't, you know, at the time I thought it was just some bacterial shit I picked up in Manila. I picked up this bug after hanging out with about 30 Chinese folks down in Manila. I think it was because every one of them were chain smoking cigarettes like they were going out of style. My lungs got fumigated because they were pumping out more smoke than an old diesel jeepney. Okay, so that's what I wrote and I, would, I just did a quick five minute video I guess to explain why I have been posting videos and just to talk about that fast. Uh, but I'll put the link to that down in the description. But that's what I wrote back then. I wrote, I have a respiratory infection because I was hanging out with, with a bunch of Chinese folks, but I thought it was because they were smoking, you know. So you have all these factors going through your head between the Chinese smoking, the, uh, the nastiness of Manila, the diesel fumes of Manila, and oh by the way, this fucking tall, tall volcano cooked off and it pumped all this shit in the atmosphere. I'm not thinking uh, fucking coronavirus from China. I'm not thinking that at this point. Nobody was thinking it at that point. So I go back. The other thing that, that convinced me to do this video, just for, just to document this, I was communicating with my buddy Dennis. And I'll just pull up a couple of the, just pull up the screenshots here. I just kind of went back, and I was looking at my communication with people back then, and and I wasn't communicating with anybody, but I did send Dennis a couple of messages uh, right after it, or, or right during the time. So on, let's see, on the 21st. So the 21st was uh, was a Tuesday. That was a Tuesday. So that was like the second week. That, that was, you know, well, the week after we came back from Manila. So on, on uh, well, I take that back. It was the second week. So the first week when everybody was kind of sick, and then the second week when it put me out of commission, this is, this is the 21st. This is when I'm about to or at the time getting bedridden. So me and Dennis were just chatting a little bit. And I said, hey man, we're okay here. We've all been sick a bit, almost like the flu. I'm still recovering. You now that was on, uh, that was on the 21st on Tuesday. <coughs> so, on the 23rd, which was Thursday. I said, man, I turned back sick over the past few days. Haven't been able to leave the bed or the couch. So Dennis says, you have the coronavirus from China. I said, maybe. I started taking antibiotics two days ago, but I've been fucked up. And he said, I read that the Chinese eat bats. They get it from eating the bats. And again, remember, this is early on when we're just starting to grasp this shit, just starting to, to listen to what's going on. And I said, I had a knot on the right side of my neck, I think a limp gland. The whole right side of my head is fucked up. And he says, uh, one, entire one entire city in China is quarantined. You need to go see a doctor. I said, yeah, man, if this don't get better by Saturday, I'm going. So that, that was my communication with him. And I went back and I looked at it and I said, you know, or so I'm starting to remember and put, putting everything together that, that my whole crew, you know, had uh, a little bit of symptoms. The old lady said she wasn't feeling well. Faith didn't feel good enough two days to come to work. She wasn't feeling well. Um, I think maybe the babies had a temperature at some point. But for, you know, for the babies in Fatima, it was mild. Faye, you know, you know, couldn't, didn't, didn't feel good enough.
that's kind of the way I felt that first week. But then that second week when it kicked in, it started fucking whooping my ass uh, because I'm the old guy. Now, Faye's older than me by 10 years, about eight years. But it, for whatever reason, it hit me worse than the rest of my crew, whatever this thing was, if it was COVID-19. So, uh, Saturday, that Saturday is when I came off that bass, I was feeling better. <clears throat> Still had a little bit of a cough, but I was able to get out of the bed. I was able to feel better. I was ready to go get something to eat. Um, and that was, that was pretty much what happened. But, uh, if I had to describe it again, if I had to describe it, it, it was the flu to the 10th power. It was like the flu fucking 2.0. That's probably the easiest way to describe it. It was a the worst fucking flu I've ever had. So you figure, okay, today is uh, the 17th. So you're talking in February, March, April. That's three months ago. So three months ago is when we had this ride Coincident, which coincides coincidentally was when I was exposed to people fresh from the mainland and it just seems like everything adds up now maybe I'm way off maybe we just you know caught some fucking bug the manila funk whatever you know I, I brand it come up with different names for it but at this point I'm leaning towards that's what we had why didn't uh, we spread it? Well, we pretty much fucking quarantined ourselves here. Um, you know, Faye was either here or at the house, so it wasn't like she was going around. Uh, so the whole crew was pretty much quarantined. We, we didn't know to quarantine ourselves. It wasn't intentional. You know, well, what do you do when you're sick? You know, you, you stay at home, right? If you can't, in my case, if you can't get out of the fucking bed, well, you can't obviously go out to the market so that's kind of my theory because you think well why didn't other people get sick well in fact we were locked down in this in this room in this apartment so with that said um, it's a possibility I will go do the antibody test and find out once this shit gets lifted hey baby no, I'm okay, thank you. So I tell the story, number one, to document what happened to us, what happened to me, and number two, to discuss, like, the numbers right now, you know, I just, I just Google this and I pull this up from, from Google, so if the numbers are off a few. Here in the Philippines, we have 5,660 confirmed cases. 362 deaths, 435 people recovered. Now, these numbers are not accurate. 100%, there is nowhere near accurate. Healthcare here in the Philippines, folks, is rudimentary. Now, if you're a foreign guy or if you're you know, a rich local, you can go to these hospitals that, that cater to that demographic if you have money. Yes, you have health care. If you are the 99% of the other folks here in this country, health care is rudimentary. You can disagree with me, but let me just tell you my personal experiences. Um, you know, as far as medical people wearing rubber gloves, personal protective equipment, basic universal precautions as we call them, it don't happen here. I went and got blood drawn for an HIV test. Well, basically, I just did the full gamut. Uh, you know, with my lifestyle, uh, occasionally I go and, and I get every test known to man done because I want to make sure I'm straight and that I'm not infecting other people. And I recommend you do the same. You know, if you're if you're out partying and playing, uh, you know, partying like a rock star, sleeping with different girls or different guys every night, whatever. You know, every, every few months you need to go get your ass tested. It's the right thing to do. That's what I do. 
So I go, I go to get a HIV test done. The girl fucking draws my blood. No gloves. No gloves. I'm at a fucking clinic that specifically tests for uh, sexually transmitted diseases, and the nurse draws my fucking blood with no gloves on. Okay? You will go to doctor's clinics. They're not going to wear gloves. I'm not saying everywhere, but I'm saying the majority of places when you go here to receive health care, they're not wearing universal protections, uh, universal precautions. If you go into a restroom at a hospital, there's no soap in there. Go to take a dump. There's no water, there's no toilet paper, there's no ass sprayer. That's reality here in the Philippines. You don't believe me? Just fucking go, go to a hospital. Um, you know, go to any local restaurant, go into any local gas station. You told me if there's a bar of soap in there. Nope. So with all that said, this, this country here would seem to be an absolute petri dish for this thing to spread. If I had to guess before this shit started, would I, would I guess or theorize that Italy would have 10,000 deaths and the Philippines would only have 362? No, that never would have crossed my mind. I wouldn't have thought about it in that sense. I would have said the Philippines, this shit is going to burn through this country, a transmission rate of almost immediately because you have so many people packed into such a small landmass. Uh, you know, this is one of the most densely populated countries, places on the planet. So I would have thought the Philippines, uh, India, that within a matter of days, every, every person in the country had it. I thought this would have burned through here in like a week. Everybody's got it and you either recover or you die. So how are we at April? We're at April 17th, and there's only 5,660 cases in the Philippines. Well, let me do uh, Philippines, okay, population. Okay, population was 100 something million, is that right? Population. So you got 300, 327 million in the U.S. and here in the Philippines, you got 100 million. So look, we have a third of the population of the United States in a landmass, you know, the size of what a state or two. Now, right across the damn ocean, right here, is mainland China. Just pull up a map, okay? You look across the Philippines and across the South China Sea, there's fucking China. We are in close proximity to where this shit started. There are Chinese folks by the droves coming and going, always, well, not now, but there were Chinese folks coming and going in droves through Manila Airport. Then we had a big outbreak in South Korea. There are South Koreans coming and going in droves to Angeles City to go over there and party and hang out and gamble and hang out with the bar girls for three days, four days on end. It just would have made sense to me that the Philippines would have been one of the first places for this thing to absolutely spread like wildfire. But here we are, if you believe these numbers, which obviously I'm telling you these numbers aren't correct. And the reason they're not correct, there's no testing. <clears throat> there's no testing. People aren't going and, and fucking getting tested. Number one. And number two, what my theory is, is that this shit has already burned through the Philippines back in December, January, February, before the lockdown even happened. That's just my theory. 
how could it not have burned through the Philippines early on when we are right next to China, droves of Chinese folks flying in and out of here, droves of South Korean folks flying in and out of here? How could it have not? How is the Philippines like the last place to start seeing anything? My theory is that it burned through here early. The difference is here you, than Italy, you don't have a high population of elderly people who have underlying health conditions. If you get old here and you have some type of health condition, you're gonna die. Unless your family's got a lot of money, you, you just, just pass away. So we don't, I say we, here, you don't have, you know, 90 year olds sitting around playing chess and checkers because they're going to the damn doctor every day and getting treatment and getting medications. People just don't live like that. Um, you know, her grandma is old and sick and got a bunch of ailments going on. She's in the village and they're taking care of her. She's not at no, no care home or going to the doctor or the hospital every day. Nobody has money for that. She'll stay in the village and, and you know, live out uh, the rest of her days gracefully and then she's going to die. It's a different system. So, it's just my belief that we don't have that vulnerable population, the numbers of the vulnerable elderly people with underlying conditions to where this virus could take out that many in a short period of time. They've already been taken out through natural, natural causes. Uh, where in the West, we can prop up older folks, our elderly folks who have these conditions, we can prop them up with modern medicine and they live longer. And so my theory here in the Philippines and a lot of other places around the globe like this, you don't have the numbers of elderly people for this virus to take out. That's why you're not seeing the numbers here. We didn't see the numbers. You know, here in the Philippines, folks, I would say, and you know, I've talked about this before, when you grow up in an environment like this, you know, you'll go see kids swimming in, in a canal in Manila that's full of fucking shit. They're, they're literally swimming in fucking sewage with all of these bacteria and these viruses floating around. If you or I were to jump in that same thing, we'd probably fucking kill us. But these, these kids have been doing this every day from day one. It's normal to them. Their immune systems are a hell of a lot stronger uh, than us folks from the West. That's my belief. Just through natural exposure to these different viruses, it has, it's a combination of uh, you know being in the tropics. The tropics present a totally different set of challenges and set of viruses and bacteria and uh, you know, things that make you sick because of the nature of living in the tropics. Number two, the lack of health care. Um, number three, the fact that a lot of people can't pay for health care. All those combinations, it's, it's, it's just common sense that their immune systems are, are on a higher level than folks in the Western world, even though we've been immunized. So th that's my theory. So this thing blew through here, you know, late December, January, February, and you know, people just fucking shrugged it off. Maybe it took out some folks, some older folks, but here there there ain't no damn autopsies. Okay, you fucking die, and you know, next thing you know, you're you're laying in a box in front of your family's house, and there's a tent set up, and people are coming to visit you and sharing food. Ain't no damn CSI and autopsies going on, uh, you know, for people who die. It just don't work that way here. I think that it's, it's I think it's already burned through. And, I, and again, I think the reason we don't see the numbers, we don't have that, the numbers of elderly, and the number of elderly that we do have do not have these underlying conditions being propped up with modern medicine. I think that what I had back in January was COVID-19. It fucking kicked my ass. 
It is classic, all the symptoms of the flu. Uh, what people talk about, I think the, the only thing that I really didn't read about was people with swollen lymph glands, but that's what happened to me. And I guess that would tend to indicate that it was a severe infection. So my, my immune system was working overtime to get rid of this. And the rest of the crew, they didn't get as sick as I did. You know, the, the, the old lady and the babies because of youth and probably Faye because her immune system is naturally higher than mine. Just by living in this tropical environment, being exposed to more things that I've been exposed to. That's my theory. Folks, I'm not claiming to be right on this. I'm just telling you my personal experience and my thoughts to open up the argument um, so that people maybe look at things from a, from a different angle. Now you could say, oh, well, the reason the numbers are down is because of the lockdown. Uh, folks, this is day, what did I say it is? It's day, day 32 of the lockdown. This shit's been going on since December. So January, February, and what, half of March? This thing already had a two and a half, three month, maybe longer than that, head start on this lockdown. So just take the, take the lockdown out of it. China is right across the pond. It's, it's right across the sea. There's fucking commerce, there's people coming back and forth. You mean to tell me that this thing just magically didn't show up here for three months and start burning through the population? Have you seen how people are packed in the back of jeepneys, packed on buses? Watch my videos, I'll show you. Go to any fucking restroom, you're not going to find a bar of soap in there. Ain't no paper towels unless you go to some place really nice. People in the slums of Manila are living in there like cordwood, stacked in there like firewood. Um, this, just by looking at those parameters, should have been a place that this thing just fucking came through like wildfire. And so that's just my thoughts on it. My thoughts on it, uh, I don't think the Philippines are going to see these numbers like Italy saw, like uh, South Korea saw, like Japan. I, I don't think we're going to see the numbers here. And maybe you can give some credit to the lockdown. Um, but I think the lockdown came three months after this shit was already coming through here. So you have to factor that in. So maybe it's a combination of everything. I hope I'm right on this. I hope I'm right that the Philippines will not see these numbers that everybody else has seen. Uh, I hope I'm right. I hope that this is the worst that the Philippines is going to see. I ran over something. Um, I, so I, I, I hope I'm right on that. And I hope that the fucking curve here is just on the way down. And I don't care what, if my theory is right or if the lockdown was right, I don't care what is right. I just hope that the, 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 these numbers stay low and it's the end of it. I really, I really do. But, but here we are. So those, those are my thoughts and you know if you have any if you have any any thoughts about what I just said, obviously leave them down in the comments. Um, but again, how can numbers be correct when there's not there's not a lot of testing going on you know the minute they start testing, obviously numbers are going to go up. You slow down the testing, the numbers go down. But I think what, what, you know, to confirm, well, I mean, to sort of delve into my theory, I mean, they need, if you just took, say, you know, 5,000 people in Manila and did the antibody tests, I would almost say that there would be a high percentage of those folks that already have the antibodies because it's already blown through here. I don't know. I'm not a virologist, but I am here locked down. I am part of this pandemic. I am part of this Luzon Enhanced Community Quarantine. And this is a, a document for the historic, 
the historical record of this pandemic of 2020. And, and so those are my thoughts. Now, I guess the U.S. is leaning towards opening things back up. I hope that the Philippines follows suit. Uh, but apparently, and I just from reading, the uh, president has th uh, basically threatened a total lockdown, a martial law type deal because people in Manila aren't really abiding by it. Uh, the quarantine rules that's just what i've read i mean we're already basically in, in martial law so i don't see how it could get any worse unless they just shut down all the fucking stores that sell the food and and medicine i hope it doesn't come to that i hope it doesn't come to that but we're already seeing protests in the u.s um because people are tired of this lockdown uh people here are out of money they're hungry we were we were talking about uh, you know I I don't want to turn into I, I don't want to go that route and just talk I, I'm not talking politics here I'm just going to keep it that's my experience that's my thought from a medical standpoint looking at numbers how can these numbers be this low how can there not be bodies stacked in the streets there's a hundred something million people here living in tight quarters. And we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that. We didn't see that January, February, March. First part of March. And we are right next to China. And I got sick like a damn dog. <laughs> the uh, second, what was that really the uh, third? Well, you could just say from what? Say from the 9th, the 9th to the 25th uh, was my ride of sickness. With that last week being fucking absolute. Took the dog out of commission, my friends. I'm gonna take a break. This fucking RX100 is about to overheat, and I'm only shooting 1080. You shoot fucking 4K, it'll last four minutes. Now it's overheating inside the fucking house, shooting 1080. I got a destination for this camera, and it's called the bottom of Subic Bay. Fuck, why do I keep giving this thing another chance? <laughs>